Welcome to my presentation on empowering nail workers to reduce workplace chemical exposures. New York City is home to the largest cohort of nail salon workers in the U.S. This industry is a significant source of business revenue and employment for Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Nepalese immigrants, with many nail salons being women-owned and operated. Nail salon workers are a vulnerable population facing multiple health stressors, including chemicals from nail products and psychosocial stressors both inside and outside the workplace. And there is evidence that these exposures are leading to harmful health effects. In 2015, a series of investigative reports in the New York Times described the city's nail salon workers as facing multiple challenges at work, including exploitative employment practices and limited protection from recognized hazards. Following this series of articles, New York State passed new regulations which included additional health and safety requirements for salons. One component of this new initiative was a new state law requiring that all salons install costly new ventilation systems required to be run at all times. These requirements have not been met with much positivity by nail salon owners in New York City, since many salon owners are unsure how to comply and have only received minimal guidance from the state. Other barriers to compliance include the cost of installing and running these systems, as well as the systems being too noisy and bothering their clients. As a result, there has been an overall lack of compliance with these regulations. This leads us into our ongoing intervention study, where we are focusing on developing strategies to empower nail salons to reduce their chemical exposures, regardless of their compliance with state regulations. To date, we have recruited five Nepalese and Vietnamese-owned nail salons in the New York City area. Of these salons, three have been in compliance with the law, one was in partial compliance, and one had no ventilation system at all. In order to achieve our study goals, we obtained a seven-day me baseline measurement of chemical con concentration in nail salon air. Then our team analyzed the data to create an exposure report, which we discussed with salon managers to educate them about their changes in air quality throughout the day. We then worked with the salon manager to come up with a plan to reduce exposures using existing engineering controls. For salons in compliance, this meant turning on the ventilation systems more often throughout the day. And for salons without pr proper ventilation, this meant opening windows or doors to increase airflow. After the intervention, we collected another seven day measurement of chemical concentrations in the nail salon air. What we found is that the intervention led to the greatest reduction in exposure among nail salons that were already compliant with ventilation regulations. Compliant salons also tended to be larger, have more customers, and have more capital resources. In summary, we found that our intervention worked the best among nail salons who were already in compliance with the public health law, indicating that ventilation does indeed reduce workplace chemical exposures. However, we also identified a need for further investment and support for smaller nail salons without the resources to upgrade their ventilation systems. Our next step is to develop a policy brief urging policymakers to support compliance by strengthening this public health law, by offering financial support to struggling nail salons to install these ventilation systems, translating the law into the native languages of nail salon owners, as well as developing a list of recommended contractors, preferably ones who also speak the languages spoken by nail salon owners.